All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokakudash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all you are, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Baha Shem is in the name, Raka is spirit, Kodash is holy, Akyam is brothers, Akwath is sisters, Shalawan means peace, and Yasha Allah is Israel in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. All right, this is Joel chapter 3, and I'm going to jump down to verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. And your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. All right. And this is this lesson is inspired by the interview of Putin last night with Tucker Carlson. And a lot of points were made. You know, I'm going to do this video, Lord willing, and then kind of go into details, you know, um, on certain things that he said. But overall, you can tell that his posture is a posture of war. You know, um, him taking that interview generally speaking, was kind of like a beacon. You know, it's spiritual that the Lord said that he would be a guard unto the other nations. Because everything the other nations are experiencing, he was mentioning it. You know, he was mentioning how they weaponize the dollar, how any time the U.S. Uh, doesn't like what you do or what you say, they put sanctions on you. When everybody has to use the dollar, they use it for their own benefit. So basically, there's a crying out. There's a resistance to the current world order. And that always, in most cases, results in war, man. All right? And that's exactly what you saw. If you watched that interview, Lord willing, you know, uh, I'll put the link in the description to the interview. It's two hours. I mean, it's a lot of, you know, you got to uh, eat the meat and spit out the bones. It's kind of lengthy. But there was a lot of points made, you know, concerning prophecy, really. All right? Real quick, this Revelation 11 and 14. It says, the second war is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And when I think about that, you know, we're just discussing at this point in that interview, it was just about Ukraine and Russia. Right? Basically, the U.S. used Ukraine as a pawn to fight against Russia. But there's still a conflict in Gaza going on. All right? Taiwan is still a high uh, flashpoint, if you will. It's a very hot spot in the earth. Tensions are rising in that area. The Middle East has always been a very, uh, so-called Middle East has always been a very volatile area. And Putin basically sounded the alarm. Everything the other nations are going through, even the allies of America, all right? Because one thing that he mentioned was the whole Nord Stream pipeline, which was actually a benefit to Germany. And Germany is allied with the US. And he brought out that point that you know, the U.S. don't even care about their allies, so to speak. So basically, there's shameful spewing on the glory of Babylon the Great, which is America. All right. Now, real quick. This is Matthew. Chapter 12. Because long story short is wars coming, man. All right. Long story short. This is uh, Matthew 12. And it's already here. It's just going to increase. All right, this is Matthew chapter 12 and verse 25. And Yahweh Shai knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Because the Russians are Edomites. All right, that's so-called white people as well. The, uh, the small hats, the Israelis, those are so-called white people. All right. So you have this divide, the uh, Turks, the, uh, the the Turkish, if you will. A lot of those guys are Edomites. Now, of course, you have Jakes. You have a lot of nations mingled amongst them. However, as a nation of people, all of these guys are Edomites. Their biblical nationality goes back to Edom. And they're all divided against each other. And they can't stand that, that way. And this is why, ultimately, war is about to happen. And one thing I noticed about uh, Putin's conversation 
is that every time Tucker Carlson tried to mention certain things that America says about Russia or about China, he was like, this is just a narrative. This is just the, the boogeyman that the West creates to forward their own interests. And they basically ruled the nations in anger. All right, even their own brethren, because the Russians are their brethren. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 12. It's like yeah, Isaiah chapter 14 and uh, verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. All right, because a lot of things that uh, Putin mentioned. All the other nations are going through it. He was talking about how the other nations get pressured by the U.S. to forward their policy at the expense of their own well-being. That's oppression. Because we talk about what goes on with Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans concerning the so-called white man. But at this point, he's ruled all the nations with anger. And he's basically put them in a position where they're forced to fight. All right? This is Isaiah chapter 14. And man, there's so many points on here. This is uh, verse 5, Isaiah 14 and 5. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in, in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. And look. This is why the scriptures say if he was if he's evil to himself, to whom will he be good? The Russians are his own people, man. You know, and uh, if you have the stomach and the patience to listen to it, uh, Putin started the whole interview going into the history of, of Russia and how the relationship between Russia and America went through the first world war and the second world war, and now we're entering into the third. But he mentioned the relationship in the first and second. And when you really think about the first war and the second war, it was really just Edomites against each other. And that's how we know we're really at the end through the spirit of Pathi al Bashim al Shah because this kingdom is splintered. And really, what happened in that interview was every nation that's going through the same thing, Putin has become a guard unto them, man. Part of being a guard is the one that's able to speak up. All right, and it's beautiful when you look at it through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Osha because this is only the beginning. Before war is, uh, before war turns kinetic, it's cold, it's economic, and then it becomes more and more vocal before it gets more and more hot. And that's exactly what we're seeing. You know, I believe through the spirit, of course, you know, the Lord had that interview happen to basically sound the alarm. Because this is only going to make the other nations that are against America more bold. The fact that the Lord put the spirit on this guy Tucker Carlson to put this out against America's wishes shows you that they're all splintered. And it shows you that the Lord wanted this, this, uh, this narrative to get out. Man, it's beautiful. All right? It's beautiful when you really look at it. Matter of fact, let's go to Ezekiel 37. Because as the scriptures say... Russia is going to be a guard unto these other nations. All right, Russia has already cemented alliances with uh, with those African countries that are leaving France. All right, man. Last night was beautiful. You know, personally through the spirit, being able to watch that and, and witness, you know, prophecy in motion. It's a beautiful thing, man. All right, we're blessed through the spirit to see these things that we're seeing in this time. All right, real quick, this is Ezekiel, chapter 38, Salakia. And I'll start at verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord, Power, behold, I am against thee, O God. Hey, because the Lord has started off like he's against the Russians too. All right, because on the world stage, the Russians look like the underdog. But the Lord is making a statement that he's against them as well. Because they're Edomites at the end of the day. Even if their own brethren is oppressing them, they're still Edomites. 
All right. It says the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, verse four, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, all right, which is those Iranians, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomar and all his bands, the house of Togomar with the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Because those are the Turks, all right? And we all we always go into this beginning with our apostles. The Turks, even though they're a NATO ally, they've always been on the fence. They're tied to the Ishmaelites through religion, but they're Edomites as well. But eventually they're going to break this uh, NATO alliance and join Russia. All right. Verse seven. Here's the point. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them. So this is basically on the world stage. Russia looks like the one person that's the one nation that's standing up against the bully. And all these weaker nations, they're becoming stronger through seeing that. This is why you see a resistance to this current world order all across the planet. And beginning with our apostles on down, there's always this statement that America's not going to go down without a fight. They're not going to just hand over the, the, the control of the earth, the influence of the earth. They've tried economic sanctions. They've tried using the media to slander. One statement that Putin made in that uh, interview was he was he said, nobody can beat American propaganda. You know, roughly paraphrasing. He said that America controls all the media outlets. So all the narratives, most of the narratives that you hear is what America wants you to hear. And that's why you have to dig and do a whole bunch of research to find out what the actual truth is. Think about it, months, for months they were saying that Russia was losing. For months they were saying this, man. If not a year, at least. They were saying that Russia was losing the fight. Now, we are, now the smoke is clearing and you're starting to see the propaganda for what it is. It's just lies, man, it's a narrative. And Putin brought that out. All of these statements, a lot of the things that he said is only going to embolden, especially leaders of the nations, because they're going to watch that interview very closely. Really through the spirit, that interview was for the elect. You know, Lord, will we be a part of that number? But it, it shows us that, let's get it. Because the Lord said the, the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord, man. All right. One statement, all right. Not to rant, but one another statement that Putin made, uh, Tucker Carlson asked if the uh, if a higher power was involved in what he was doing, and he said no. All right, real quick, this is Proverbs twenty one and one. So that means he thinks that he's doing this on his own, and that's an Edomite mentality. This is Proverbs twenty one and one: the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water he turneth it whithersoever he will. So when Tucker Carlson asked him, do you think? A higher power is influencing what's going on in the earth. And he said no. And he identifies himself as an Orthodox Christian. Which shows you these Edomites don't really believe in the Lord. Now you have a lot of Jakes over there in Russia that look like Edomites. But overall the Edomites as a whole, they don't believe in the Heavenly Father. They think that they're doing all of this on their own. And that shows you that even though Russia is the underdog on the world stage, they're still Edomites, man. All right? So Lord willing, this was edifying. I just wanted to go through that through the spirit. You know, I got fired up when I saw that interview. Lord willing, I want to do another lesson on it, really going into some detail. But, you know, I was so excited through the spirit. I just wanted to put this out there because, man, it's time, bro. It's time. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. It's fucking time, man. You can see the, you can see it. You know, when you watch that interview, you can, you can literally see a house divided. One Edomite on one side of the uh, conversation Another Edomite on another side of the conversation. But war is going on. People are dying right now. And it's only going to go up from here, man. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokakodash. 
Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you walking, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath who are believing this word, and all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.